So we got Tampa, Toronto, 5-6 on the rotation. Uh, Tampa Bay, minus 130 road chalk uh, in this game. The total six pretty much across the board. Uh, Tampa Bay playing great hockey. It really does continue for them. I mean, I, I totally downgrade the, the loss to the Philadelphia Flyers. Like I say, any loss that the Tampa Bay Lightning suffer without Andre Vasilevsky in net, you can't, you know, or you can't uh, basically give that team too much, you know, of a downgrade, too much, uh, you know, negative criticism for a loss like that, okay? Because their goaltending without Vasilevsky is not great, Tampa. So you shouldn't give a team too much credit for beating them when he's not in the net. Uh, but Tampa Bay will have their guy, who's been absolutely phenomenal, Andre Vasilevsky, this season back in net. He's had a tremendous year. He's a big catalyst as to why Tampa Bay uh, is winning games and playing well. And I guess for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, they're in a bit of a New York Islander situation here tonight. They're back home after a disappointing end to a road trip. You've got Mike Babcock agitated about the way this team started the game uh, against the Golden Knights, that 6-3 loss. Hey, Mike, don't don't cry about it. Don't whine about it. That's what every team's done in Vegas this year. I mean, it's they get off to this bad start. Vegas has got that. Er- How many times has Vegas scored an early goal on home ice this year and gets the crowd into it? And it's happened time and time again. And it happened again to Toronto. They found out about that. So they just found out something the whole league's found out. The, when you play uh, the Golden Knights and T-Mobile Arena, it's nothing for Mike Babcock to really get that bent out of shape about. Uh, but this defensive play for this team continues to be a little bit of a problem. Four goals allowed in each of those three last three road games in the West. Uh, Arizona, Colorado, and Vegas all scoring four more against this Toronto team. Now the fuel and the speculation is building up even more that Lou Lamorello has got to make a trade for a defenseman prior to the trade deadline if this team is going to be a true Eastern Conference and Stanley Cup contender. And that's probably the case. I mean, they're probably going to need to upgrade the blue line a little bit. The Zaitsev injury is such as much like the Dahan injury with the Islanders. Uh, uh, you know, Nikita Zaitsev's not moving the needle from a betting perspective. He's absolutely not. But he's absolutely impacting the Leafs' ability to play solid defensively on along the blue line. I mean, that's a guy they missed. He plays in all situations. Penalty kill uh, is usually, you know, pretty responsible with the puck. I can't say that about some of these. Certainly can't say that about his replacement, Martin Marincin. Can you play a worse game? Holy fuck, could you play a worse game than you did on Sunday against the Vegas Golden Knights? He was absolutely horrendous. Uh, he treated the puck like a hand grenade. Wanted no part of it. Get it out. Get it out of here. You know, and it basically would put it right on the stick of a Golden Knight player time and time and time again in that hockey game. He was brutal. Uh, If that's your answer to to Zaitsev being out, that's a problem for Toronto. And now, you know, you're struggling. You're you're in a tough spot. We talk about it the first game home off a road trip. And now you got to welcome this Tampa Bay team into your into your building. That's not an easy ask and an easy task tonight. Uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So we'll see. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a, it's one of those circle the wagon spots. I mean, they see where Tampa is in the standings above them. This game will have Toronto's attention. I'm not sure they're playing good enough defensively, though, to get the job done. We'll see if they can. Uh, Total-wise, it's, again, Tampa's scoring. Toronto's playing good, poor, I should say, defensively right now. I'd lean over, but I stay out of overs at six with Tampa with Vasilevsky. I need the backup in there. He's played too well. He really has. So, Again, it's a game I have lukewarm opinions on side and total. Probably not going to get involved, but I do know someone who's involved. It's Alex B. Smith with the Lightning and the Leafs. Alex, what are you looking at here? I'm looking at the best team in hockey right now with, with the Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, I, we talked about it when we were off air right before we got on. About you know, I'm th- looking at this. The way that Tampa's playing right now, I'm surprised that the books still have not adjusted this team, especially with Vasilevsky. Like I said, there's such a drop-off between Vasilevsky and either one of the backups with Buda. Now he's down Louis Domingue getting called up that you just automatically put them in a dollar sixty or a higher price virtually uh even on the road where they've they've done very well. So the fact that we're finding some good value in my opinion, you need them at a dollar thirty, dollar thirty five. I was instantly already looking at, at playing Tampa. They're playing extremely well and they're catching Toronto off not only coming back from a five game road trip but they've been on the road in eight of their last nine games. So that's always hard. You got a team that had a small trip, came home for one, and then went back for a, a long extended trip that they didn't do well on. Uh, they have lost six of the last nine overall where, you know, just Tampa just seeming to dominate, you know, in every single game that, they, that they've been in. And with Vasilevsky, the offense is just absolutely electric right now. Uh, there's no way I would, would have ever looked at Toronto in the spot. But uh, like I said, even at $1.30, $1.35, that high, high of a price, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not one to lay chalk, but uh, I think Tampa Bay is the only way to look here i'm definitely on the lightning tonight all right lightning it is for alex b smith and dana lane also has an opinion on the leafs and lightning matchup here tonight dana what's uh, tickled your fancy here in to 
good. This is going to be fun. Okay. So I just worry about this being a little bit of a letdown spot uh, at, for Tampa Bay after their big win against uh, against Columbus. And, and now they go to Toronto, which is a team that normally you should be motivated to be. But I think Columbus is a little bit above Toronto. At least that's what I have in my power ranking. So I, I just kind of wondered if this might be a spot that might be a little bit of a lull for Tampa Bay. Uh, I will say this. I mean, I, I maybe I have some connection to Toronto. I was at the Vegas Toronto game, so I, I saw exactly how unmotivated they were when they came out in the first period. It's crazy because Lou Lamarillo comes out and says, "Well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna stay off at, at Red Rock Casino, which is about ten miles off the Strip, and you know, we're not gonna partake in any of the Strip activities, and that's gonna be the key for us." And then they come out completely flat, which really make made Mike Babcock look really bad because. Uh, his team was not ready to play that game. And they just, I, I, you know, and it's funny because we, we kind of go back and forth a little bit as well about, you know, what exactly is it about playing in Vegas that, that teams just do not come in fired up? I mean, it takes them a good 30 to 35 minutes just to kind of get acclimated. And, and, and I, I sent out a tweet during the game saying it, it's just, it's amazing to me how teams come in here and try to skate with the Golden Knights instead of trying to disrupt the Golden Knights. And I think a little physicality on opposing teams' parts would do them some some good, even if they gave up a few power play opportunities in the beginning, because this is not a Golden Knights team for all their success that has had a lot of success on the power play. So back to tonight's game, uh, we're watching Mike Babcock's presser after the game, and you know, he was pretty controlled. I thought I thought he was going to go off a little bit. He did mention uh, that he thought Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay was a smidge better than Vegas, which uh, a lot of people took note of. But um, I, I think they're going to be really I think they're going to be ready for this game. And again, if you're going to give me a plus price with a team that I mean, look, yes, Toronto, Tampa Bay is, you know, offensively is obviously one of the best teams in the league. But it's not like Tampa. It's not like Toronto doesn't roll or hasn't rolled uh, three lines out there that have been productive. Even in, even in the third line, if you look at Mitch Marner's numbers in the last five games, I mean, he's a point-of-game guy. Uh, maybe you want more out of Van Riemsdyk. Maybe you want more out of Bozak. But at least you got three lines there I think still can put the puck in, in the back of the net. Um, they are certainly uh, predicated on speed, so they can match Tampa Bay up in that, in that area. Um, you know, this is game one of a six game homestand. So it does figure that they, they get home a Sunday night. So it does figure that the game one and in a very important homestand, by the way, again, one that's going to start off with Toronto and San Jose, you would figure that game one is going to be when they're at their, at their peak. So, um, you know, give me the plus price at home. I know much has been made about Vasilevsky and his 25 wins. But if you look at the other end of the ice, I mean, very silently, I mean, very quietly, um, Fre- Freddie Anderson has uh, has 20 wins. And uh, honestly, if it wasn't for Anderson the other night against Vegas, I mean, Vegas could have put up seven or eight goals. So I'm going to take a chance with the Leafs tonight at plus price on home ice. There you go. So in terms of these two road favorites, mid-sized road favorites that are probably as hot as can be right now, Bruins and the Tampa Bay here in this game. Dana's going against both of them tonight. Islanders at home as a dog, Toronto at home uh, as a dog. There we go. That's nice. You know what? The spot is not terrible for uh, either of those teams because it's not like the Islanders in Toronto as home dogs here are chopped liver hockey teams. We've seen the Islanders. They're capable. We've seen Toronto. They're more than capable. This was one of the hottest teams in the league early in the season, Toronto. So uh, it's a situation where, and Dana made a good point. The kids are all right on this Toronto team. They're getting the job done. Matthews has been good. Marner's been gotten out of his funk the last couple of weeks. Uh, Nylander's uh, got, had a nice couple of goals recently as well. Kids are doing good. You want more out of JVR, uh, Bozak, you know, Kadri's. They really miss Kadri on the defensive side of the puck. No question about that. Uh, he was a guy that you'd be looking at checking some of those top players. Uh, Nate McKinnon uh, with the Colorado game. Uh, you know, you know Neil, who uh, and Marsh so guys like that for Vegas. He would have been uh, on them like white on rice if he's in the lineup. But without him, that's one of your top checkers for sure in terms of forwards, defensive forwards. Uh, and Kadri not being there has certainly hurt the Toronto cause defensively, even just as much, in my opinion, as Zaitsev being out. So uh, it's a situation where Toronto now back home against Tampa. Can they right the ship? And certainly got can't be feeling good. And I'll tell you what, the Vegas flu, 
Uh, it doesn't care if you're staying on the strip, off the strip. Doesn't care if you're staying out in L.A. For crying out loud, it's going to get you. Uh, and it certainly still got Toronto uh, on Sunday. Uh, good win for Vegas there. We'll see if Toronto has a bounce back in them. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.